Okay, I have two o'clock here on my clock, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Welcome everyone. My name is Lainey Castle, and I serve as a project director with the ALA Public Programs Office. I have the good fortune of overseeing the Bridging Cultures Bookshelf on Muslim Journeys here at ALA, and would like to thank you for joining us for today's session, which focuses on planning successful academic library programs that highlight thematic content and sharing those plans in the form of a grant application. In particular, today we will touch on available and upcoming opportunities opportunities for programs that focus on Islamic history and culture. Our goal is to encourage and support all of you in planning your applications for the Muslim Journeys Bookshelf in order to bring this initiative to your communities. This session is being presented by ProgrammingLibrarian.org, which is a resource website of the ALA Public Programs Office, and it is sponsored by the National Endowment for the Humanities. We are extremely grateful to NEH for developing and supporting the Bridging Cultures Bookshelf, as well as for their ongoing generous support of libraries. Before we get started, I would like to set out some very basic information about communication in the online classroom. Um, first, please don't use the instant message feature to pose technical questions. If you are experiencing a problem, you should send a private message to our tech expert, Angie Hanshaw. Just mouse over her name at the left of your screen and select Start Private Chat. Next, we will have a Q&A period after the main presentation. In order to keep the program on track, we do ask that you save your questions for the presenters until the very end. And finally, if you experience technical problems during the session, don't panic. The complete presentation is being recorded and it will be available for download by early next week. Now I'm going to offer some very brief overview information about the Bridging Cultures Bookshelf Grant, and then I will introduce our presenters so that they can share their own thoughts, ideas, and experiences hosting programs and planning their applications. As the last part of our presentation, we will walk through the four narrative questions posed within the Muslim Journeys Bookshelf application in order to offer at least one straightforward example of what might work in a proposal, and then we will open up for Q&A. Uh, the Muslim Journeys Bookshelf is a collection development and programming grant that will provide 1,000 public, academic, and community college libraries with a selection of books and films chosen by scholars, librarians, and programming experts. The materials were selected with a view to familiarizing the American public with the cultural heritage of Islamic civilizations around the world. In order to receive the collection, you must submit an online application. The web address is programminglibrarian.org slash muslimjourneys, and those online applications are due by October 25th. That is an extended deadline. The very minimum require requirements um, are simple. Each library that receives the collection must plan and present one single public program that introduces the books and the Muslim Journeys themes to the community. Libraries must also add the books to their circulating collections. There are many options um, for the type of program that you can plan in order to participate in the grant. We have some ideas on our website. They would be here under the resources tab. Um, and our presenters will offer thoughts and ideas as well. For a simple overview of the grant, it may be helpful to click here. Um, that will just break things down in the most basic way for anyone who wants sort of a quick uh, summary of what's happening. Successful applicants will receive um, a total of 25 books, three documentaries with public performance rights, a one-year subscription to Oxford Islamic Studies Online, and access to a great deal of program support materials created just for libraries and librarians. Detailed information about the collection is available online, as you see, but um, on this page, you can see descriptions of the books and also the organization of the collection materials by theme. Just a word that you are not required to focus on any one of these specific themes in your programs if you don't wish to do so. Bookshelf awards will be announced in early January, and programs should take place in libraries during the calendar year 2013. Right after awards are announced in January, ALA and NEH will open a second grant opportunity, which will offer 125 of the participating libraries from the bookshelf a $4,500 grant to present scholar-led reading and discussion programs that focus on select books in the collection. That is where you will um, zero in on a particular theme. This grant opportunity will follow ALA's Let's Talk About It program model, and more information will be available in January. I am hoping that I can get everyone to respond to a survey question. Um, I would like to just get a good idea of who here in the classroom has experience with the Let's Talk About It program format. So you, if you could just in, indicate um, if you are familiar, if you have actually applied and or conducted a grant, or if you are not familiar at all. 
Wow, 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 wow. So we're definitely reaching some new people today. Um, Let's Talk About It is a model uh, scholar-led reading and discussion program that has been around for almost 30 years. Um, because that is not the purpose of today's webinar, I would direct you to a single web URL to get overview information, a planning guide that breaks down the entire model, a series of um, past themes and all the supporting materials to conduct them. That URL is programminglibrarian.org slash L T A I. Let's talk about it. Um, we also will offer a webinar in November that will be all about doing Let's Talk About It programs. So I would encourage you to register for that um, if you're interested in the second phase of grant making. Um, I do mention both of these programs together now, not to confuse anyone, but just to point out to anyone who may be on the fence about applying, applying for the bookshelf collection that that is a prerequisite to participate in that grant in order to receive the cash grant in the second phase of um, programming. So with that overview out of the way, it is now my pleasure to introduce our presenters. First, we're going to hear from Sarah Mark. Uh, instruction and Outreach Librarian with the O'Leary Library at UMass Lowell. Next, Sarah will pass the microphone to Sandy Marcus, Assistant Professor and Coordinator of Library Public Relations with the Kurt R. Schmeller Library at Queensboro Community College. And then our third presentation will be from Tammy Sales, Marketing and Outreach Librarian with Western Illinois University Libraries. After those presentations, we will take a look at the narrative questions within the bookshelf application, talking through with Sarah about the application in progress that she is planning and then we'll go to question and answer. So I will pass the microphone over to you, Sarah. All right, thank you, Lainey. My name is Sarah Marks. I'm the Instruction and Outreach Librarian at the University of Massachusetts in Lowell. Uh, before this, I be I was the Instruction and Outreach Librarian at Fitchburg State University where at that location I ran the Let's Talk About It series for the Jewish Literature One a few years ago. Since I've come to UMass Lowell, we have started, begun, started focusing on public programming as a tool to bring people into our library. To give you an idea of what UMass Lowell is and where it is, UMass Lowell was once upon a time two state colleges. In 1975, they became one campus and has since been building into the city to become one of the UMass universities. It's a comprehensive research university with about 15,000 students through bachelor's, master's, and doctorate programs. It is considered a public institution, so we do, use, we do allow community users to come in and use our facility. Lowell, more specifically, is a former mill town that's finding a new identity. Lowell not only is the birthplace of the Industrial Revolution, but it is the birthplace of Jack Kerouac. We have a population of 107,000 people from various backgrounds, including Irish, Greek, Indian, Cambodian, Laotian, and anybody else who comes in. So there is a great deal of community po uh, programming focusing around the cultural heritage of this city. This was our first foray into public programming at the library. This is typically done without the library's involvement, but still done on campus. There's a great tradition of programming done in conjunction with the community and the, the campus. We started with the Let's Talk About It Making Sense of the American Civil War series that was just run this past spring. We identified three objectives that we wanted to focus on. First, we wanted to use this as an opportunity to build a better relationship with the surrounding communities. We wanted to help participants think critically about a topic. And we wanted to make the library the center of campus again. These are the three core objectives we are following as we develop more programs. As I said, the Civil War program was our first foray as a library into public programming. And I coordinated this with my, because of my experience doing a similar program at Fitchburg State. We had a variety of collaborators from local libraries to Civil War roundtables to our campus retirement group, Lyra. But we focused our collaborative programming on the Chelmsford Public Library, a public library in the town next to Lowell who has a pro programming and librarian of their own and had experience with programming in libraries, and also the Lowell Historical Society. And we offered two supplementary programs that were very well attended. This, brought, this program in general, the discussion series, brought a number of community members with interests in local Civil War history. 
this was set, found to be the bigger community group than the students or the faculty and staff. Our local scholar was Dr. Michael Pearson, a local history professor with an expertise on, a, on the Civil War. And we picked him particularly because not only were was he popular within the community as a speaker, but also he was familiar with this topic so very extensively and was happy to participate. He brought his students to the program and he was a great speaker as far as generating discussion. We decided to give him a stipend from the grant to help thank him for the extra work he did above and beyond his normal workload. At the end of the Civil War series, we did ask participants what they wanted us to do next. At this time, we didn't know what the ALA's plans were, so our polls real helped us realize that the local interest in Jack Kerouac would be a great way for us to continue programming. And right now, I'm working with Dr. Todd Teachin, a Beat Generation scholar from our English department, to plan a similar series about Jack Kerouac. And in this case, we'll do the five meetings, but we're only going to focus on three of Kerouac's books that specifically focus on his experience living in Lowell. We are working with a committee of people who are helping us find funding and plan and promote the program from our own local library and English department to the Jack Kerouac Literary Festival that happens every August in Lowell, every autumn in Lowell. And our local group, Lowell Celebrates Kerouac, which does a number of programs in the spring. We're also applying for a Massachusetts Humanities Council grant to help supplement some of the, fun the funding. One program that has come up from my own interest in research is Wikipedia edit-a-thons as a way to pull in public people, the public community, to focus more on information literacy goals. This is going to focus on knowledge construction, how we edit Wikipedia, what we have to keep in mind, and we're focusing on topic pages that relate to text our English class or reading that we call our common text, our local history, and any other programming that we want, we are having at that time, we will do a themed Wikipedia edit-a-thon on. To build relationships with faculty, we are offering faculty master classes as a way for faculty to learn more about the services we provide in the library, as well as an opportunity for them to meet the librarians that they work with. And this has already started for us. This is our trial run this semester. So we're hoping for great success. We are planning on applying for the Muslim Journeys, and I've been asked to speak more about that later as well. We're including cult more cultural literacy in our goals this time and information literacy as an eventual outcome of the work that we do through the programs. We have a large group of collaborators, and it seems to grow every day. We're working with a professor from the poli-sci department who we were hoping to do a lecture the launch of the fall semester 2013 and she just emailed me today and said she'd be happy to. That will be run through our Parker Lecture Series program. This is a group that typically programs with the campus and the community to run lectures of community interest. We've met with our Muslim Student Association, the Office of Multicultural Affairs on campus, and off campus we were very pleased to get in touch with participants in the Islamic Society of Greater Lowell and the Greater Lowell Interfaith Leadership Alliance. Right now we're working on four programs that are really going to focus on the spring of 2013 because we do anticipate applying for the Let's Talk About It grant and we don't want to plan too much for the fall in case we get that. Right now we have two movie viewings. The first will be Slave, uh, Prince Among Slaves and that we are doing in Black History Month with our Muslim Student Association and Multicultural Affairs Office. In March we're going to do a Wikipedia edit-a-thon we're going to select, we have selected one of the themes from the collection and we're going to identify the appropriate entries that we want to focus on. We're also going to, at the end of the spring semester, do a viewing of Quran by Heart to talk about interfaith issues in the community. And this is where our partnership with the Islamic Society of Greater Lowell and the Greater Lowell Interfaith Leadership Alliance are really going to be critical to promoting and getting participants because we want this to be a larger discussion, not just on campus, but in the community about 
who we are as a community. And then finally, our Parker Lecture Series with our political science professor. We have a backup program with our art gallery in the works in case we don't get the Let's Talk About It grant. We have a programming web page through LibGuides that we have been using. We used it to promote the Civil War program, and we are going to use it for the Kerouac program, the Muslim Journeys program. We've collected them all together in one LibGuide that's libguides.uml.edu slash programming and I'm more than happy to answer questions at the end of everybody's presentation. Next I'm going to turn things over to Sandra Marcus to talk about Queensborough Community College. Thank you Sarah. As a librarian and coordinator of library public relations at Queensborough Community College, in addition to providing public programs and managing our Friends of the Library group, I have many responsibilities, including creating library exhibits, editing the library newsletter, managing book sales and giveaways, recommending titles for collection development, teaching information literacy classes, manning the reference and chat desks, serving as liaison to the English literature and foreign language departments, and creating libguides. I have also won grants and provided scholarly symposia and colloquia for teachers and scholars. Nothing, however, has afforded me more satisfaction and more of a sense of contributing to my school, my community, and my world than public programming. I am deeply committed to providing the service and sharing my experiences to help you in any way that I can. I have prepared a handout with steps to planning a public program gleaned from what I have learned and would be happy to answer any questions after the presentations. The Muslim Journeys Bookshelf Program is a good opportunity to start such programming, offering a large number of grants and requiring only one presentation. I plan to apply for this and if I am successful later try for the Let's Talk About It program. The term multiculturalism could have been coined to describe the population of both my school, QCC, and the Queens community in New York City where it is located, the most culturally diverse county in the United States. Founded over 50 years ago, QCC is one of the 19 colleges across all five boroughs that make up the City University of New York. The student body has nearly equal proportions of African Americans, Asians, Caucasians, and Latinos, reflecting different countries, cultures, and languages. Over 99 languages are spoken on our campus. More than 15,000 students are enrolled in associate degree or, or certificate programs, and another 10,000 students of all ages attend continuing education programs in a broad range of subjects, from leisure enrichment to career preparation. The campus also contains not classroom means of cultural enrichment and education for the community. These include the QCC Art Gallery, which presents world-class exhibits, the newly expanded Harriet and Kenneth Kupferberg Holocaust Center and Archives, whose mission is to use the lessons of the Holocaust to educate current and future generations about the ramifications of unbridled prejudice, racism, and stereotyping and the Queensboro Performing Arts Center, which annually presents a professional performing arts series offering diverse multicultural entertainment. Given the extent of these resources, you may wonder why we also need public programming from our library. There are a number of reasons. First of all, it serves as a conduit to the resources of the campus. 
When members of the community attend a library program, they are made aware of our library resources, as well as the other opportunities for enrichment on campus. Secondly, unlike the Performing Arts Center and continuing education programs, library programs are provided at no charge, often an important consideration in the current economy. Third, discussion programs provide opportunities for self-expression rather than just listening to lectures. This is often the learning style of choice for adult learners and offers the opportunity to discover biased views, both in others and ourselves. Also, such programs can foster understanding between people of differing backgrounds and ideas. An enlightened public is less likely to harbor hatred and bigotry. This value is especially significant for a program expressing aspects of the Muslim culture today. Knowledge is the strongest weapon we have against racial or religious prejudice. In addition, public programming through partnering and sharing material provides unique opportunities for public relations and outreach. Establishing connections between the academic library and the college faculty, college administration, academic departments, and other resources on campus, such as continuing education, as well as local public libraries and the community at large, including museums, historical societies, senior centers, and local high schools. Such connections provide opportunities to both offer and receive support, strengthening the community as a whole. Finally, I believe the greatest value lies in the intrinsic worth of lifelong reading and learning, fostering a broadened view of the world and enriching the lives of participants. The QCC Library has presented public programs with experts, scholars, and performers in music, history, culture, and literature. A number of programs have been offered under the auspices of the Friends of the Library, whose importance lies in the community service of programming rather than fundraising. Such programs have included two live concerts, both highly successful with a noted professor offering a discussion of the music presented, a Meet Mrs. Lincoln dramatization with the audience given the opportunity to ask Mrs. Lincoln questions about her tragic life, and a presentation of the background of the graphic novel as a follow-up to a Let's Talk About It discussion series. The Mrs. Lincoln program, uh, interestingly, attracted the most heterogeneous group. We also received grants for two of the discussion series sponsored by ALA. Let's talk about it, lit Jewish literature, also sponsored by Next Book, and most recently, the Civil War Let's Talk About It program, also sponsored by the National Endowment for the Humanities. For the former program, we partnered with a local branch branch of the Queens Public Library System, the Holocaust Center and the Continuing Education Department, as well as Friends of the Library. Our scholar was an English professor with expertise in the area. For the Civil War program, we also partnered with Friends of the Library, the Continuing Education Department, and the local branch of the Queens Public Library System, as well as the Bayside Historical Society. Our scholar was a history professor with expertise in American history. Past programs have been very well received with excellent evaluations and resulting in new Friends of the Library memberships. Many participants have repeatedly requested more of such programs. Currently, I am seeking a Civil War follow-up as a Friends program, and since funding is not provided, I am also planning to utilize the rule of Friends as a means of offering the Muslim Journey Bookshelf Program if we are granted one of these awards. We have also offered programs in the role of partner, 
When the college won a big re-grant, the library supported it by presenting a discussion of the things they carried at a public library. I led this discussion and found it extremely rewarding. Unlike many younger students, this group of from 30 to 40 participants had all read the book and they also brought their life experiences to the table. Last year, the college did a common read program promoting To Kill a Mockingbird to be read across the campus and we supported them, leading discussions and providing venues for dramatic presentations. We will support another college common read, The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks, planned for spring, and we are assisting Queens Public with their new Big Read Grant for Fahrenheit 451. At our library, uh, public programs are planned and implemented very carefully and strongly supported. First, limited parking and library space have to be considered in selecting dates and locations. Sunday afternoons were determined to be best for our situation, enabling optimum parking and the ability to limit use of a reserved section of the library. Second, for the past year, the library has done subject-specific library guides available online, and we now support public programs with such lib guides, presenting schedules of activities, lists of books, articles, maps, and pertinent facts. I have also included extra normal original brief movies on the LibGuide sites, including an imaginary conversation between Washington and Lincoln in the Civil War Guide. These are a lot of fun to do if you've never tried one. At the request of the college, we also did a lib guide for To Kill a Mockingbird, and we'll do one for The, Immor uh, the Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks. Third, most of our public programs have been recorded on video and are available at the media site of the college, Tiger Media, with a link from the LibGuide. The Civil War Guide contains links to the videos of all five discussions. Library displays make up another means of our support for programs. Changing exhibits on a variety of topics are presented in three glass cases near the entrance of the library. Program topics are used for displays when a public program is offered. Finally, partners have played an important part in much of our programming. Partners are selected and contacted with the topic of the program in mind. For example, for the Muslim program, we will ask the Muslim student organization and a local Muslim center to partner with us. A final step in planning public programs is attracting audiences, which requires careful marketing. We have found the most effective and economical means of marketing to be through posters and flyers distributed throughout the campus and community. Posters are mounted at strategic locations. They are also sent to partners to be mounted at their sites. A mass mailing of folded flyers also is sent out. Mailing lists are obtained from such sources as past program attendance, continuing education, and the whole.
was. community with less than 3,000 university libraries is open to the public allow community users to check out books utilize computers print and attend any event we tend to have more community members than students attend our programs university libraries has been the recipient of the Lincoln the Constitution and the Civil War traveling exhibit and the let's talk about it making sense of the American Civil War book discussion from the American Library Association and the binding wounds pushing boundaries African Americans in Civil War medicine traveling exhibit developed by the National Library of Medicine and the National Institutes of Health in 2011 University libraries provided 29 themed programs, some with multiple events. All of these events were open to the general public. We continue to expand our programming efforts every year. We're a rural campus. Macomb does have a public library, but it doesn't have a space to accommodate large group discussions. Our programming fills the need of the community. We also encourage our students to attend as well. I've found that our programs that take place over the lunch hour, the attendance is predominantly students and faculty, while our evening programs and lectures tend to be community members and faculty. Our Let's Talk About It Making Sense of the American Civil War program brought a lot of community members into the library for the first time. We had several who attended all of the discussions and the additional programming events hosted by our community partner, Western Illinois Museum. All of our extra programming took place at the museum. It began with a discussion held by our project scholar, Dr. Tim Roberts, about Lincoln and the Gettysburg Address. This was held prior to the first book discussion and was an additional way to promote the upcoming discussions. When I approached the director of the museum about serving as our community partner, she was already in the works planning for an exhibit to celebrate the 150th anniversary of the Civil War. She agreed to plan the exhibit opening during the time of the book discussions, so the opening reception was part of the additional programming. We also had a WIU grad student from the History Department present her thesis research, 50 Miles to Slave Country, Slavery in Missouri and Why It Matters at the Museum. During the time I was preparing our application for the Let's Talk About It grant, I received a letter from an alum who was a sculptor. He had created a bronze sculpture, Surrender at Appomattox, and wanted to know if we would be interested in displaying his sculpture. I spoke to him about my grant application and asked if he'd be willing to allow us to display the sculpture during the book discussions. We hosted a reception for him the night of the last book discussion. It was a nice way to close out the discussion series. We use LibGuides, so I created a guide for the Let's Talk About It series. This actually worked out to be a great way to push out a lot of additional information provided by ALA such as the additional reading recommendations, when the discussions will take place, and the questions that will be discussed that night. I received a lot of compliments for providing the LibGuide by the participants. They really appreciated having the discussion questions prior to the talk so they felt they could come prepared. Because we didn't have to pay our scholar, we spent a majority of our grant dollars purchasing many of the recommended additional readings and added them to our collection. 
Each LibGuide discussion topic had a spot for the additional readings, so as the books were added to our collection, I would add their call number for participants to easily go to the stacks and retrieve the item without having to look in the catalog. The LibGuide was a great way to organize the information provided in the ALA packet, and I would definitely do this again. Our project scholar was Dr. Tim Roberts, who served as the project scholar for the Lincoln Traveling Exhibit the year before. When the Let's Talk About It grant was announced, I approached Dr. Roberts to be the scholar and lead the discussions, and he agreed. His role for the application was to provide a brief outline of how he would tie local history into the discussion topics. When we received the grant, he did attend the training with me. He would then provide me with the questions a week or two prior to the discussion. I coordinated all of the marketing, promotion, and events set up. I think it's important to have the conversation up front with your scholar as to responsibilities and expectations. This would prevent any conflicts once the program begins. Western Illinois University Libraries will be applying for the Muslim Journeys Bookshelf. Although I will not be the project coordinator for this application, I will be responsible for marketing the bookshelf and the program. For the books, bookshelf application, we are going to partner with the Moline Public Library. We are also going to work with the Islamic Center located on campus to host an open house to celebrate the receipt of the bookshelf. The coordinator of the Islamic Center is the advisor for the Muslim student group and will likely serve as our program scholar when we apply for the Let's Talk About It grant. A book display will be created in our display carousel. University Libraries has recently created a Pinterest account, so a board will be created to promote the books and films in the series. If we receive the Let's Talk About It grant, we intend to work with our local movie theater to screen the films included in the bookshelf collection. I hope to convince the project coordinator to create another guide for the books, which could then be expanded if we are successful in our Let's Talk About It application. I've included a talking points handout also with additional suggestion for programming ideas. Here's my contact information. Feel free to contact me with any additional questions you may have. All of our contact is included in the talking points handout. And now I'm going to turn the mic back over to Lainey so that we can begin our questions. Thank you, um, Sarah, Sandy, and Tammy. Actually, before we move into the Q&A session, I thought it might be helpful to take a look specifically at the Muslim Journeys Bookshelf application. Um, we're going to spend maybe five minutes or so going through the narrative questions that are within that application. And I have asked Sarah just to respond sort of conversationally about what is being planned at her library. Um, so we'll start with the first narrative question, which is, please tell us about your decision to apply for the bookshelf. What do you think this topic will be of um, why do you think the topic will be of interest to your community and what programming goals might it help address? So, um, Sarah, let us know what you're thinking about that. All right, thank you, Lainey. As I mentioned in my presentation, there is a strong Irish, Greek, Indian, Cambodian, and Laotian community here in mm -hmm. Lowell, but there is not a lot of discussion focused around our Muslim community, and there's extensive programming that goes on to highlight the the beauty of the other cultures and we felt that we had an opportunity to highlight the beauty of the Islamic and Muslim cultures so we wanted to be part of that we wanted to contribute to promoting cultural literacy on top of that we also want to bring people back into our libraries and continue to build our commitment and relationship with our community I think that this program especially provides an opportunity to discuss a topic that a lot of people find difficult to discuss in constructive ways and the partners we have are very anxious to find a new way to facilitate these discussions and to promote positive ideas to both our students and the, and the greater community. Thank you. Um, next, can you tell us how your library will use the print materials that are included in the bookshelf to present programs and touching on um, how you're going to encourage your patrons to read those materials that have been included as well as engage your community in exploration of the theme. 
without considering the Let's Talk About It program, which would be the easiest way to get people to read these, we're looking at a couple of different programs throughout the calendar year. And as I mentioned, we're really focusing on the first half of the 2000 year calendar, 2013 year calendar, in order to do the bulk of our programs in anticipation of getting the Let's Talk About It grant. We are going to make sure that each of our programs focuses on one of the themes that's presented in the Muslim Journeys collection. So, for example, our first program, A Prince Among Slaves, is going to focus on the theme of the, um, I believe it is the American experience of others. And since we're doing this in Black History Month, we find, we find, we're hoping that this will be a discussion point that can connect these two different ideas of the Islamic experience and the slave experience. We're going to make sure that the books themselves are available on our reserve collection as well as cataloged in our catalog for people to find easily and with a lib guide to help direct people who find it that way. Wikipedia Edit-a-thon might be a very easy way for us to promote the books as well, or at least we hope so. At the very least, we hope people will use the Oxford reference book that's coming with the collection because it is an online resource that people can use to cite Wikipedia articles easily. We're going to focus that also on a theme, and we're going to make sure the books are available at the session with attendees being told which books might be helpful for them to read ahead of time. To encourage students on the campus to read the book specifically, we're going to, we've been talking with our English department to make one of these titles what they call the English department common text. All our English comp students, their freshmen and sophomore and second, first and second freshman year semester, read a common text in their comprehension English classes. So we Every semester it is voted on by the English department which books they want to read and we've submitted the entire list to them for consideration for the fall 2013 text. They've already read Persepolis once and they want to focus primarily on nonfiction ones. But we're hoping that they can find a variety of, top, of books in that collection to vote on. And finally, of course, if we get the Let's Talk About a grant, we're going to work with the English department to focus specifically on that theme and a book from that collection. Okay, and this is the third and final um, required narrative question, and there is a force that is optional. Um, tell us about your plans to present programs that introduce the books and the Muslim Journeys themes to your patrons and the larger community. Um, I have asked Sarah just to describe one program plan, since that's the minimum requirement for um, the grant. So Sarah, let us know what you're thinking. Well, since I already told you about a couple other ones, uh, one that we're really excited about that's going to br easily bridge the campus and the community is the end of April with our Multicultural Affairs, our Muslim Student Association, the Islamic Society of Greater Lowell, and the Greater Lowell Interfaith Leadership Alliance. We're going to show Quran by Heart and focus on the past Pathways to Faith theme. We're going to make sure that this is promoted strongly to not just the Islamic community, but the Judaic and Christian and Hindu community so that we can bring people together to discuss these themes of interfaith that are present in our, our city. Uh, yeah, that's all I want to say about that for this question. Actually, before I move on to the last um, narrative question, I just wanted to say that um, we will be providing full sort of curriculum, if you will, to facilitate viewing and discussion programs like the one that Sarah described planning. Um, that will be everything from an introduction to the film to discussion points for your audiences to explore during the live session after the screening and points for them to consider during their viewing experience to make for the most robust program for those who may not have um, institutional resources to hire a scholar or presenter with subject area um, expertise. So that's another tool that will be available to you. So now the last narrative question, which is optional. Each library or library system that receives a Muslim Journeys bookshelf is encouraged to collaborate with at least one community partner. So Sarah, if you could tell us about um, how you're going to be working with one specific partner, that would be great. Um, to follow with the April program about 
Quran by heart, this is where our partnership with the the Greater Lowell Interfaith Leadership Alliance is going to be most beneficial to us because we want to promote it to so many people within the community focusing on faith organizations. They're going to be the central coordinator for promotion and food at this program. We're really excited about the opportunity to provide food from different cultures at the program, knowing from academic experience that food generates participation, I was very pleased that they were happy to not only coordinate people bringing food, but pay for anything we might need to bring in. To the extent that when we said that this was not a definite program yet because we don't know if we have the bookshelf, the participant on our committee from the Leadership Alliance actually said, well, let's do this anyway because I want to have food. So they're very excited to promote this for us and we're very excited to have a partner that has such a far reach in our community. Okay, thank you so much for sharing all of that. Um, thank you to Sarah, Sandy, and Tammy. We were so glad to have each of you share your own experiences and ideas so that we can all see a little bit more about how programming works in such different institutions. Before I open the floor for question and answer, I would like to mention that our staff will send an email to everyone who is registered for the webinar no later than early next week. That will include a link to the archived version of today's presentation where you can get any handouts, as well as a link to a brief survey about your experience today. If you could take just a few minutes to uh, respond to that survey, we would really appreciate it. And now it looks like we have about 15 minutes left for questions. I'm going to go ahead and start off with a question from Edith Campbell. Edith says, I belong to a consortium with other area universities and the public library. Which form do I use to submit our application? Um, there are several options, but the one that I would recommend if you are part of a consortium is to is to submit an application on behalf of all of the eligible libraries within your consortium um, at once. So doing that would allow you to get books for any interested public libraries, academic or community college libraries in your consortium. I understand that there may be special or um, maybe high school libraries in a consortium, but unfortunately those, those types of libraries are not eligible. Um, the caveat is that you do need to have the application certified, if you will, by an authorizing official. So there needs to be some party who has oversight of each of those libraries within the application um, in order to authorize the grant to be given there. The narrative, there's one narrative only, so you would be writing responses to these questions that we just reviewed, but you would be addressing how programs are going to take place in each of the sites. We do require that there is one live program in each library that receives the grant. So um, it's a little bit of finessing how you're going to do that in a rather limited narrative space, but we're looking for really broad strokes on how you're going to use it across the consortium, and I hope that answers your question. like the next question is from Susan. I've coordinated two Let's Talk About a Jewish Literature series. We did five books for each. Is Let's Talk About It Muslim Journeys the same or do we need to cover all 25 books? Um, also, if we already have a subscription, we'll be... Okay, so I'll take the first part of that question. Yes, you will select one of the five themes in the Muslim Journeys um, project to focus your Let's Talk About It application on. We will ask that you prioritize um, your interest in the themes and focus your application on a single theme. But in the end, we will be breaking it down so that 25 libraries get each of the themes to make the whole 125 pool of awardees. Um, the second question, if we already have a subscription, will we be funded for a year's worth of access? Um, there's really no flexibility with that part of the grant. Um, you can either accept the one-year subscription for the term indicated, and that term is calendar year 2013, or you can turn it down. But there's no way for us to compensate a library that already has the subscription or to roll the subscription forward into another year. Unfortunately, it's sort of cookie cutter given the scale of this grant. Next question, Brenda, should the application for the bookshelf include intentions to apply for Let's Talk About It if successful? Um, Definitely. Uh, you can indicate that in the application, and I believe there's a way to also indicate a um, prioritizing um, a preference for the theme, and we would love to hear from you about that. Um, this is a question for Tammy from April. Tammy, what advice do you have for other rural academic libraries in terms of marketing this type of program? I'll let, give you the microphone, Tammy. Well, when I got here, I studied the area and checked out um, just 
continued to do internet searches to see what community organizations were around, who had websites, who posted calendar of events, that sort of thing, and utilized anything I could that didn't cost me anything to promote my event. Um, but what I found, we because of our how rural we are we don't really bring in a lot of people outside of the macomb area for our events does that really answer your question um i'm gonna hope that it does and i'm gonna move on to melissa's question since we're partnering with non-university entities how do we provide our partners access to the oxford islamic studies online database um the access is just for the library so um that's that's the only option so if you're partnering with a museum anyone from the museum would actually need to come in to the library to access the database um we're looking into what level of um leeway we can give to libraries in terms of directing them to actually take selections um, found within that resource and print them for, for example, a community discussion of a particular article, but those details are still being worked out. So that's the only answer I have at the moment. Um, Sandy, who counts as a community partner? Do other academic departments count as community partners? Um, I'm sorry, this is cut off. Or do they need to not be affiliated with the university. Since we have changed the partnering um, requirement from required to optional, it's totally wide open. Whoever you think would um, lend something to your to your program, raise your visibility, add some content expertise, feel free to recruit them. So absolutely, absolutely, other academic departments would count as a partner. That's completely appropriate. Um, we had since indicated that the partner should be a non-library um, organization, but um, that is totally off the table now that it is an optional requirement so if you were going to partner with your local public library that would be also totally um, welcome and appropriate next manju is there any funding available for panels with muslim journeys related topics for example oral histories um, that is an outstanding program idea unfortunately um, the only mechanism that we have to offer funding for that is under the auspices of the let's talk about a grant opportunity that will open in january the way that you would be able to submit your application would be to plan your required five let's talk about it reading and discussion programs which are to be scholar led and then in that grant application there will be an optional area that invites supplemental programming and in other words, programs that also help extend discussion of the theme in your community. And you could write up that sort of panel and you would be able to use the grant funds that are available to support that in your library if you are selected for the Let's Talk About It grant. I would also say um, if you are in New York City, I know that the New York Council, um, the State Humanities Council in New York is going to have some level of support for these programs. If you um, were to contact your State Humanities Council, they may have some other options available to you. I'm not sure state by state exactly what's being offered, but um, they will be involved and they may have an interest in supporting a program like that. Allison, will applications be more successful if there is more than one partner and more than one program? Um, in general, for PPO grant opportunities, um, organizations that go above and beyond our basic requirements typically have a more um, competitive grant application. Um, the scale of this grant, though, is very large. We are giving a 1,000 awards. Um, we are nowhere near that number of submissions at this date. And um, so we're really looking for solid, eligible um, programs that really do use the resources. So um, since that's not even a requirement, more than one partner, I think that having one, responding to the fourth question, listing that um, community partner, and possibly um, providing a letter of support as an upload would be completely sufficient. That's my, that's my thought. Um, let's see, are we have more? Deborah Sean, partner organizations can be the friends of the library, correct? Absolutely. Rachel, you may have answered this. Can public libraries apply for the grant if they have a religion department? Um, yes, they can. There's, there's no restriction on um, US public libraries unless they're um, funded by, um, unless they're uh, like a Department of Defense library. Um, Abby, follow up to Melissa's question. What if a university and public library partner do both get access to OSO? Yes. Um, the entire collection, which includes the Oxford Islamic Studies Online subscription for the year, would go to each library listed within an application. So um, access information would be provided to both within the application. Um, several partners, that is OK. Kim, who are the persons that 
can um, application certifications a manager of a local public library? This is addressed in our guidelines. Um, it's really up to the unique institution. Um, in some areas, a branch manager would be considered the appropriate party. Um, it seems appropriate to me, but I, I don't know politically within an, a library system if you would ever need a higher level of approval. That would really be a question for you to determine um, within your organization. But ALA and NEH will certainly accept a branch manager's um, certification. Um, let's see. OK, I think we've gotten to the end here. Um, Pardon me while I'm reading to catch up. I'm going to free up the mic in case any of our other presenters have anything they'd like to add while I'm catching up on the questions. Um, I just, this is Sarah, I just saw Lisa's question regarding uh, fees typically offered to speakers. Uh, when we did the Civil War discussion series, we gave our scholar a thousand dollar honorarium for doing so much work, but for the individual speakers who came to do supporting programs, we offered significantly less. I believe for one speaker who spoke about uh, Civil War genealogy research, we gave about $200, which we split with the Chelmsford Public Library. And then we had a reenactor come on campus and talk about resources used, and he was given $100 to speak since we sponsored that one alone. For the Muslim journeys, we're, we were told by the Parker Lecture Series that if our speaker was not a professor, they would offer about $500 honorarium to speak, but since we've gone with a professor on campus, that is an option that's no longer on the table from their funding source. So it ranges depending on who you get. I know for the Jewish Literature Series, we did the graphic novel one at Fitchburg State, and we brought Ben Catcher onto campus, and he asked us for, I think, a $2,000 honorarium. So there, it varies based on who you're getting. And I think a lot of speakers are very happy to receive anything and are glad to know that they're being thanked in some way for their participation and their efforts. But we were told, specifically from one group, when we were considering people to speak for this Parker Lecture Series, that we should not go through agents. We should go directly to authors we have connections with, simply because the agents charge a significant amount of money versus going directly to the author, who might be a little more understanding of budgets. Uh, I just, uh, this is Sandy, I just wanted to mention as far as the bookshelf program where there isn't funding, uh, you might consider your friends of the library group as a, as a good source of maybe not an, a lot of funding, but enough to provide a, uh, a program, uh, at least one program and maybe more than one. Uh, this this can be a good source of of providing a program when there isn't any any funding. I just wanted to add too that typically ALA's grant budgets to NEH they usually figure. Um, a, an honorarium of about $200 per program for a Let's Talk About It scholar. Those scholars are pretty involved and they have to commit to doing five sessions in a library usually, so it's a full $1,000 honorarium for the full program if that's helpful. Uh, we paid our scholar less and uh, both times we, we pay the scholar less because we, we were limited in the amount that we could afford. And uh, for both Let's Talk About It programs, the scholars were absolutely wonderful and they were both brilliant uh, people. 
they were very happy to take what we gave them and they just enjoyed doing the program they enjoyed working with the people Thank you very much, Sandy. And that's, that is definitely true. In different areas of the country, pe people pay different amounts. And we definitely hear from libraries who even work with the same scholars over and over again who are paid for one series. And if they want to do it again because the library has the books, the scholars sometimes agree to do it free of charge just because they get a lot out of participating in the program themselves. So it's different from place to place. Um, I think, I hope we've addressed everything. Um, and uh, it's 3 o'clock, so we're going to go ahead and let the classroom go now but um, I do encourage everyone to please apply for this grant we're really looking to get this out in academic libraries and hope that we have many participants in the next phase um, we encourage you to please please complete the survey when you receive that link to let us know how we can better plan to address your needs through webinars and um, thank you very much to Sarah to Sandy to Tammy to Angie to um, for providing technical support uh, the National Endowment for the Humanities for creating and funding this program and to all of you for joining us today. Um, if you do have any questions about the application at any point, you can send an email to publicprograms at ala.org or contact me directly. I'll put that information in the chat box. Thank you for joining us.